Today, Palamore and his cat will be breaking down gameplay from a sub rogue in Solo Shuffle. So if you want to learn about talents, openers, and how to carry games by yourself, then stay tuned for another epic VOD review. And after this video is over, be sure to check out our brand new subtlety course at skillcap.com. Here you will learn some explosive new openers and how to burst just like a rank 1 rogue. On top of this, we've added some more master and minutes guides to teach you expert level mechanics in bite sized pieces. As always, everything at skillcap.com is backed by a rating gain guarantee. If you don't climb at least 400 rating while actively using our guides, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the links below to get started, but for now, let's start the video. Hey guys, Palomar here, and welcome back to another skill cap video. In today's video, we're going to be VOD reviewing some solo shuffle for a sub rogue. So yeah, let's jump right into it, guys. Uh, all right, right off the bat, let's look at the talents really quickly. Um, so we're playing against a Destro and a Demon Hunter. Um, definitely would not recommend Disarm here. I only really play this into other rogues at the moment um, because there's much better offensive talents for us. Um, so what I would recommend is playing Thief's Bargain basically every game. It's going to give you a lot of cooldown reduction off your Vanish, which you have two charges of. Really, really, really good. Um, the damage reduction from it doesn't really matter too much. And then I'd probably look for a Smoke Bomb and Shadowy Duel. These are basically your most offensive talent pickups. And then, yeah, like I said, if you play versus another rogue, you can play Disarm, but very simple for the PvP talents. And then as for the rest of the tree, uh, I've already spent some time kind of looking at this. Uh, and I think it's just going to be easiest if I kind of just show you the build that I play. So yeah, I would highly recommend playing this build instead. The build that you're playing includes Flagellation, um, Finality, some of these like more consistent DPS talents. Whereas I think the way for Subroke to be the most optimal right now is kind of playing around having a ton of the CDR. Um, CDR is a really broken thing and wow, it's really, really good. And also the Rotten. The Rotten synergizes really well with the Subroke 2 set um, for the tier. Basically, every time you dance, you get symbols, gives you a big strike, fills your points, and gives you a big eviscerate. And then you can press symbols again to reactivate, and then you get another rotten. Yeah, I'm not going to go super in-depth on the talents, but this is probably just the best possible sub rogue build. I do a lot of theory crafting, and I've gone over it a lot. So I'd highly recommend maybe trying out the CDR build instead of the, the flagellation finality stuff. It's really, really, really good, especially once you have uh, two set. And then on this side, I actually would highly recommend dropping the Kyrian point because we're going to be playing um, this, Secret Stratagem and Deeper Stratagem. These are going to give you baseline 7 combo points as well as 5% uh, finisher damage on each of them. So it kind of completely compensates for not having the Kyrian ability. Um, but yeah, once again, don't want to go too deep in talents, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend um, playing this build. It's going to feel way better simply based off the fact you're going to have way more cooldown on all your abilities, including offensive and defensive. It's going to kind of offset with enemy uh, defensive timers, and it's just really good. Uh, but yeah, anyways, we can jump into the game. So first things first. Um, you, you need to recognize what you're playing with. So we're playing with a Red Pally on our team. So the way we're going to create a lot of pressure here is by basically cross CCing. You and your Red Pally have a lot of burst. Um, Red Rogue, this comp does synergize decently. Um, and what you can kind of look for is you probably mostly are going to be CCing the healer uh, when your Red Pally Hodge is a kill target or vice versa. If the Red Pally runs at the healer for a Hodge, you can maybe just send your Dance Sun on a kill target. Yeah, but you guys generally want to like line up your Hodge and CC at the same time. So start of the game, our position's a little bit bad here. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. So our Red Pally runs in and sends a Hodge. This isn't really your fault, but once again, solo shuffle is not really about what your what's your fault. It's about what you can do better. So what I would say is um, positioning. Definitely want to run up towards um, the enemy healer. Uh, our Red Pally obviously shouldn't have sent this Hodge here um, because it, the healer can just dispel this. But if you are in a bit of a better position, you can maybe compensate by just blinding the healer right away and then opening on the on the DH with him. So that could be really good to do here. Let's see what we decide to do. So we open on the DH here. Uh, I think this is really good. We can actually half kidney off this Hodge and maybe even shadowy duel or just half kidney and step kick the healer. There's a couple little things we could do here, but we can create a lot of pressure. Uh, I think we actually send an eviscerate and then our pal use blind here. So unfortunately we might not get anything else. We Okay, we do end up getting the uh, the blur dark and then he also cocoons over so this opener ended up being okay in terms of what was traded it's a really really insane opener for us but we definitely could have played this a lot differently um, but regardless we did get some cooldowns which is super good for us um, now immediately at this point you have kind of two options this is kind of the sub rogue brain you want to get into once a bunch of cooldowns have been traded you want to kind of think about where you still have stun drs available and where you can still create pressure in the game so you could kind of still do a swap to healer or you could do a swap to Warlock. Now, I would probably recommend getting CC on the healer and going Warlock. Um, since your Pally has wings up, you're going to have a lot of pressure. You probably get even more than Dark Pack. Um, you could run to the healer, blind him. You only have one step available. So yeah, you should probably run to the healer, blind him, and you could step and go the Warlock. 
or we could just step and go the healer or step and go warlock with no cc these are all fine options but we definitely want to get value out of our ritz burst cooldown um and our stun drs that are available right now so we turn we go on the warlock instantly we use his strike into a kidney and this is great we're instantly creating pressure um, in another direction this is exactly how you want to play sub rogue so this is really good we get dark pack kind of for free and we send a flagellation gonna start stacking up some mastery i guess and which is okay and at this point the ghost kind of over um the healer is going to kind of recover from this point because we don't have any cc on him i would say at this point you could still even just run at the healer and send a blind on him and you could even look to to gouge it um since blind is only five seconds now it's kind of hard to sap it of course but if you do something like uh if you vanish cheap shot the healer and then blind off the cheap shot he'll actually drop combat every time because blind does not give combat so you can look for um a vanish cheap into a blind and you could sap him and then during this window you guys can be just completely running down the warlock and just create the most pressure here but i definitely want to see more cc on the healer uh we haven't cc the healer one time yet and this is one of the things that subrogue is the best at doing um, so the healer actually uses revival here. This is something to note for sure. He no longer has cocoon or revival. Those are his two major healing cooldowns. So if you create enough pressure, he's not going to be able to really recover uh, if he trinkets at a CC late. So we get a blind hodge here. This is a great example of that cross CC I'm talking about. Um, since you're kind of starved on mobility here, I would say it might be better to go back and continue CCing the healer and just kind of letting your ret kill the demon hunter since he has no blur. Um, but we actually end up going in and going on the warlock. So yeah, I think this is a little bit of a mistake here. Um, our our rep pally is attacking the demon hunter. So I think it, there's a couple options here. Number one, you can go continue CCing the healer and kind of let your rep kind of wear them down because you have really big CC chains. You know, you could off of the blind, you could get a gouge into a full kidney. Um, there's like a lot of ways you can just keep the healer CC'd while your rep pally kind of primes up the DPS and then you can come swap later on when you send your last CC. Um, and then you can look for things like uh, a shadowy duel when somebody's low. He has no revival to heal through duel. Um, you are, as a server, you're always trying to create these windows, um, these win conditions to close out the game. So yeah, it's unfortunate here that we do go on the Warlock. Um, we don't get more CC on the healer, but we do end up getting a wall out of it from the Warlock. So it is good that we're still creating pressure where we have stun DRs. I do like that. Um, so now the Warlock has no wall. Healer has no Kakuna revival. The Demon Hunter has no darkness. He does have blur back and the warlock does have dark pack back so the next go is gonna have to be really prime um i think right here we accidentally send a kidney one second too early yet yeah, just before the dr's in so that's just unfortunate this happens to every sub rogue just got to be super patient with our with our damage here the d is just gonna fly in the air uh and we actually get a step kick on the healer which is great always good to land those step kicks if we can it's also very good that we're just lining the Destro Lock here. This is something to keep in mind for every melee. Is, um, if you're playing versus like a heavy caster like a Destro, your position is going to completely um, change the pressure that your team's receiving. So since you're lining him a lot, it's really good. Uh, we throw a Gouge on the healer into a full kidney. Now this is beautiful. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier in terms of landing a lot of CC on the healer. Okay, so I'm really happy this happened at the end here. This is something we can learn from for sure. This little CC window that you have at the end here, if you could have applied this during other parts of the game, uh, like when you had stun DRs uh, for the DPS, this would have created way more pressure in the game. So you can see your evoker goes for a sleepwalk too even, but even just a step kick into gouge into a kidney, you're creating like 10 seconds of CC on the misweaver where he basically can't play the game. So if you kind of set the CC chain um, on the healer while you're also sending damage on the DPS in between, um, you'll create massive pressure with the cross CC. The only problem is we're kind of sending CC when we can't lock down the DPS, so the Demon Hunter kind of just flies in the air, runs away, or presses blur. Same with the Warlock. If you were to send the CC, the Warlock can kind of just dark pact and port away, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I want to see this kind of CC on the healer while we have stun DRs on the kill target, and then we're going to create a lot of pressure. But overall, definitely some good stuff this game and some mad stuff, but it's okay. It's all good. It's part of the learning process. So yeah, in this first match so far, uh, biggest takeaways I would say... Uh, we'll try to land more CC on the healer, and we'll try to um, do it in a way where we're kind of landing more cross CC. And also, we could try to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, I'm not 100% sure if we played duel. I think we did play duel, right? I see on your bars. So I think we're not playing duel. But yeah, playing Smoke Bomb and Shadowy Duel, it just opens up way more windows to kind of close out the game. So I'd highly recommend that. Yeah. But let's uh, let's jump into game two. All right, guys. So game number two here. Uh, this time we're playing versus the Red Pally and the Destro. Um same thing with talents i would say for the first game exact same things i uh, would definitely play shadowy duel 
uh, Smoke Bomb, and I would play um, Thief's Bargain. Thief's Bargain, almost baseline. Don't really need the disarm in my opinion, but uh, it's okay. You know, we can make this work. We're going to get it done. It's all good. Uh, same thing with the talents as well. I would really just recommend that CDR build and playing around it. Um, I think it really opens up your play style and gives you a lot more opportunity. Having your kidneys back faster, your vanish back faster, your steps back faster, your dances back faster. It's really, really, really good. All right, so in the opener here, this time we're playing with the Demon Hunter. Um, the way that I would look at this game is if I was playing, I would basically tell my Demon Hunter in the starting room, um, hey man, we should probably just run at the Warlock. I can CC the healer a lot. If you and your Demon Hunter kind of run down this Destro Lock, it's going to create a lot of pressure for you guys because it's going to stop the Destro from being a beast. Because if you do not attack this Destro Lock the whole game, he's going to just be free casting Chaos Bolts, keeping Immolate stacks up on all you guys. He's going to be doing the most damage. We definitely want to run at this guy really hard. Demon Hunters have a lot of mobility, so we can get a lot of uptime. And you are a sub rogue, so you have a ton of CC you can put on this healer. Uh, things we got to be aware of is the Rep Pally. He can sank the healer out of stuns. He can bop him out of blinds. He can sack his warlock, give him freedoms to help him live. Uh, Rets have a lot of utility to help their teammates, so cross CCing him is not that bad. But yeah, generally what I would say is we're looking to CC the healer, and we're trying to use stun DRs on basically either DPS to create pressure. But since you're playing with a demon hunter, this is more of um, kind of like a cleave melee instead of just like a rep alley, which is more of like a operates more in a burst window this game i would play a little bit different offensively from the first one doesn't really need to be a lot of cross cc kind of just running down a target for the most part and ccing the healer a lot so in the opener here this is beautiful we can just sap the misweaver and go red this is beautiful this is honestly great your demon hunter is not really on the same page but it's not your fault i think this is really good he's going to trinket out of the kidney which is great you already created enough pressure uh that you got the red trinket and now since he's got wings up on your healer here there's a couple things you can do um, one, he has no dots on him, so you could just gouge him to just control his wings. Uh, option number two, you could just restun him, keep sending damage. Option number three, you could disarm him. Uh, option number four, you can blind him and run away, go something else. There's a ton of things you can do. They're all great options, but we just definitely want to do something. So let's see what we decide to do. We disarm him and we keep hitting him. This is great. And we get Shield of Vengeance. So at this point, um, the Pally's Trinketed uses Shield of Vengeance. I would probably look to do something else with your Stun DRs. Your DH is hitting the Warlock here, which is awesome. You get Dark Pack instantly. Um, you don't have Gouge or Sap DR for the healer, but you do still have full Kidney and Blind. Your Kidney's on CD. So what you could look for here is maybe waiting until your Kidney's up in 5 seconds, and then you could send a full Blind on the healer into a full Kidney. Now, like I said, the Red Pally can sank this, but I think it's fine. Um, getting sank out of the way means that it can't use it next time. So yeah, that's what I would be looking to do personally. Step kick is beautiful. This is going to start your CC early. Now I'd maybe look to blind into a kidney and just keep attacking the warlock here. We're going to go back on the rep pally. A little sweep here. We're going to actually get a kidney on the healer. So this is okay. Um, definitely like that we're getting CC on the healer. And we also get wall on the warlock. So what I'm going to say right now is this warlock just walled and we see him casting chaos bolt. We need to be very, very careful right here. Um, this game, you are playing Smoke Bomb. This could even be a defensive Smoke Bomb because your healer's in a sweep really low and we got some bolts coming in. But we definitely got to be a little bit careful for one second here. The Mist River Trinket's out. Our healer gets rehauled. He goes really low, but he's going to be fine with Trinket. He's fine. Okay, okay. It works out. Everything's okay. And we end up getting a Cocoon on the healer here. So we actually created a lot of pressure on the healer in this kidney. Um, we actually swapped to him. So... I don't know if I said this in the first game, but yeah, I generally wouldn't recommend going Mistweavers a lot as a sub rogue, but there are windows you can find, and this is a great example. Um, he can use his Restoral or Revi Revival in um, stuns as a Mistweaver, so um, generally it's kind of hard to kill him, and then he can also port while stun, but since he's way, way out here, we know that he's far off his portal and he can't port, so it's an okay call to go on him, but once again, things like I said earlier, the Red Pelly has Sank and Sack, so it's a little bit riskier than just going the DPS. I would prefer to just kidney him for CC and keep on going on the Red or the Lock, um, but yeah, it worked out, so it's all good. We get Trinket and we get a Cocoon, which is great. Um, right here, we can now recognize the Warlock is completely out of position. He's away from his port. He has no wall in two seconds, and he has no dark pack. So by far right now, the Warlock is the best target. We have stunned DRs for him in three seconds. We still have blind for the healer, and he has no trinket. So we can look to get a big CC chain on the healer and actually close the game out right now. Only thing you got to think about is the Rep Pally uh, and his utility. He's off every DR, so you could even just uh, lob an extra little cheap shot on him to kind of CC him. So let's see what we do. Um, we actually gouged, we actually gouged the Warlock, so I would have preferred right here, just putting a blind on the healer, the Warlock's already kind of low, he's very out of position, and, um, yeah, just getting CC on the healer instantly, really, really important here. 
Um, so the healer ends up getting a revival because we, we don't get CC on him. The pally press is bubble. Um, so yeah, I think this is probably um, the biggest mistake so far this game. Um, this is just like, I guess one of the things I talked about is the sub rogues. You definitely, your job is to kind of find wind conditions and find always where you can create the most, uh, the most windows of high pressure. And this is a perfect example, um, where the warlock's already low HP with no pact and no wall, and he's at a port range, uh, and the healer has no trinket. So you definitely could just jam some CC on the healer. The only thing you can't do is stun him, but you do have gouge for him and blind. Um, instead of us doing this, we actually just lob lobbed a gouge on the warlock and we started going pally again. Um, I would definitely just recommend going Destro, kind of like at the start of the game when I said Destro is just going to be the good target here because we don't want him casting on us. Um, but it's okay. We still do get Bubble out of the way, which is fine, and we do send the Warlock late here. Um, the only thing I would say is we still haven't CC'd the healer. I think CCing the healer is a really important part of um, playing Sub Rogue. Um, especially in solo shuffle, the way you're going to carry games the most is by just constantly putting control on the healer and letting your teammates kind of be like these super minions that attack things for you. Um, but it's okay. Um, we're, so we're still going the red pally here. So yeah, I don't think going the red is, is that bad. Um, but I just think that it's important to recognize the window where the warlock doesn't have any cooldowns. Um, so it's not that bad. We end up going the red. We're creating a lot of pressure. We get shield of vengeance. <clears throat> we're kind of running him down. We still have this blind that we're holding on to and the game's been going on for quite some time here. Um, so definitely, definitely want to get that blind out really good. Now we have a gouge off this. Um, I see you have a combat tracking add-on, which is really good. So if he does drop combat, we can always look to vanish sap. Um, sometimes if you blind when someone hasn't used a spell for one or two seconds, you will get this window. So right here, he actually does drop combat like I was talking about. You could actually vanish sap right now. Uh, he gets combat back instantly though and we get a gouge, so it's all good. Small missed opportunity, but not a big deal. The paladin has... Um, Blessing of Spell Protection up, which is not that bad for you. You can kind of go right through this. So it's probably best to just stay on him. But our healer's under a lot of pressure. We get a Kidney on the healer to the Gouge, which is awesome. Definitely just want to see some damage on the uh, Pally ASAP here. <clears throat> and this is a good example of when I talk about the CDR build. The main reason why you're having a hard time here creating pressure is because you don't have a Dance. Whereas if you're playing the Vanish CDR, um, this will reduce, every time you Vanish, you'll have 15 seconds off Dance. So you would have had a Dance here as well. You can just, you can kind of just use your Vanishes offensively to, to create more pressure. Uh, it's also going to reset your steps for mobility and everything. So yeah, right here, if we just get a Kidney on this Pally and we kind of just send damage on him, he might just be in trouble. We do have a Step Kick for the healer here. We actually don't have Step, I lied. Um, we get Cocoon. The second we get Cocoon, we want to swap off of this guy. And we probably want to just either LOS... Or just go Warlock. Um, but yeah, so, so we're attacking through the Cocoon. I, I generally don't really recommend going through the Cocoons because they're very big this patch. But I see you're stacking your Flagellation, so it's all good. Um, we're hitting the Warlock a little bit, creating pressure. It might be better to have just gone for a resell during this time, but it's okay. Uh, your DH throws a stun on the healer. This is something you need to process, so you can't be kidneying him now. You could look to gouge the healer and go ret very soon. Um, just like a little kidney on ret into a step gouge on healer all the way around. Gouge the healer under step kidney on ret. We get revival again. The healer has no revival, no cocoon. We can maybe just send damage on the ret and close it out here. He trinkets. We could re-stun him. Um, kind of get some pressure built. Your DJ is going to hunt here. We get the shield of vengeance. And we're kind of just cranking this guy, which is okay. But like I said, the Destro is also cranking us because we're not we're not hitting him. So it's something to be careful about. It's good that we're LOSing. Your DJ drops a darkness, so he should be okay here. I think the biggest thing is just... Uh, it's just the same the same idea I kind of already talked about. I think you just need to try to do specifically the sub rogue job better. Um, I think the play style that you're playing is very similar kind of to like an Asa rogue where you're you're doing a really good job applying pressure and having uptime on targets and trying to consistently apply pressure in that way. But the way sub rogue's really going to accelerate is by using its um, control. Sub rogue is like one of the highest control classes in the game. So I really 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 just want to see you um, spam CCing the healer. If you have stun DRs for him, um, and you have, like, gouge DR, we can just get kidney gouges consistently, and that's just gonna lock down the healer so much, and it's gonna give you so much more pressure on the DPS, and then it's also, it's just gonna kind of change the flow of the entire game. Also, once again, I really, really, really recommend the CDR build, because I noticed this entire game, um, we press vanish, I think, I think we only vanish one time this whole game, yeah. So, if we're playing the vanish CDR, well, we could actually probably vanish three to four times this game, and every single time we vanish, we're going to get 15 seconds back uh, of CD off every single ability, including vanish itself. 
Um, that includes your dances, your steps, everything, your kidneys, your gouge. It's just gonna give you way more pressure, especially in shuffle environment. But yeah, biggest takeaway I would say is um, CCing the healer, once again, really, really important. And then also kind of just having more awareness of uh, how your comp's gonna operate with your own teammate. So since you're playing with a demon hunter, the demon hunter, um, it's gonna do really well, like I said, with uptime. So it's really good to kind of run down the warlock. But yeah, those are probably the biggest takeaways. I really, really just wanna see a lot of CC on the healer. But yeah, let's jump into game number three. All right, guys, before we jump into game number three, I just wanna quickly say, if you like my transmog, please like the video. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, this time we're playing versus a preservation evoker. We're playing versus the demon hunter and the destro. Um, and you're playing with the red pally again. So first thing I wanna point out, um, in terms of talents, I would just say everything that I've said about the talents already, I would stay with it. Um, Thief Spargan, Duel, and Bomb. It's going to give you the most offensive potential. Very, very good PvP talents for basically every matchup. Um, just Disarm into Rogues. And then uh, the CDR talents are a massive deal. Definitely recommend trying them out. But yeah, in terms of strategy in this matchup, we're going to be trying to go the Evoker a lot. Uh, Preservation Evoker is one of those unique healers where it's going to come into a closer range constantly during the game. So I would highly recommend uh, to go him. And since we're playing with the Rep Pally, Rep Pally is really bursty, like I said, and it has um, just really long stuns with you. So I would actually try to go on the Demon Hunter and Healer mostly. And in this matchup, I actually wouldn't run at the Warlock that much. But I do think if you're not training the Destro, you need to be very aware of that and you need to be LOSing him a lot. Um, and kind of just being smart about the way you position, you know, if you kind of blindly chase this healer around or chase this DH and you're in the Warlock's line, um, he might, he might cook you up like a Thanksgiving turkey real quick with some Chaos Bolts, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, let's just go ahead and we'll play the video and we'll see how we, how things go here. So on the opener, we're walking in, uh, our Red Pally's running in, looks like we're gonna open on the Warlock, which is okay. Uh, Pally accidentally hodges at the same time with Kidney, it's gonna happen, no big deal. Um, it's all good. The lock walls here. As soon as we see this Warlock wall come out, we instantly, um, we want to do something else with our stun DRs. We can immediately stun the Demon Hunter and continue pressure on him, or we can step stun the healer and create pressure on him. But either way, um, the worst thing we can do here is keep attacking the Warlock. We just want to quickly uh, react to this and start doing something else with our dance. So we get stunned by the DH. Honestly, uh, I don't think your pally is going to sink you. And these globals are really important. You could even offensively trinket here. I don't think it's that bad to offensively trinket a lot of sub rogue. You could offensively trinket, stun the DH, and go him instead. Or you could trinket, stun the DH, and step stun the healer and go him instead too. But we definitely just want to create more pressure. It's on your pally's wings especially too. So yeah, let's see what happens here. We're going to sit this. And we're kind of just still in the warlock. We start going the demon hunter now, which is okay. He actually, yeah, he got a blur up right before this blind. So what I would say for sure here is the best thing to do um, is to use your second dance and step cheap the healer and just get some pressure on him. We definitely want to use our stun ears during wings. The healer's actually right on top of us. This is a prime time to go healer. Um, I would like a stun on the DH here and then we can even just go this guy. This way he can't dark us or incap us. We're going to stay on the DH though. Um, so this is a bit of a mistake. I think we sent our, yeah, we, I think we sent our cold blood secret tech into the blur. So it's a little unfortunate, uh, unfortunate because the blur is going to give him damage reduction. So just kind of a big missed opportunity here. I think if we went healer at some point, it would create way more pressure for us. Um, but so far in terms of the cooldowns that have been traded, we're getting a blur and a wall. It's not that bad. We're not very far behind. We could still pull through. So let's keep watching here. Um, biggest thing I'm going to keep on repeating is <laughs> I think at some point we should look to go healer very soon. Blinding him is great. This is also good because the DH blur fell. Um, so this blind's beautiful. Um, now it's going to put the DH in a spot where he's going to have to either drop a darkness or try to kite away. There's a fly in my room. It's all good. Um, the blind is really good. This is uh, a good blind, especially because the DH is kind of low HP already with no blur. So let's create some pressure and the healer is going to trink it out of this. So that's beautiful. Um, what I would say is you could instantly now swap onto the healer because he has no trinket. Again, just lots of opportunities. It's really good that you do this here. Um, the reason I keep saying this is because, yeah, preser Preservation Evokers are a very unique healer. They're very squishy and they have to play in close range a lot, which makes them a really good target for sub rogues. And uh, I don't even think you need your rep pally to really help you that much. You can kind of just solo them if you send your burst on them. So right here, we send the dance, symbols, and strike. And we're kind of just nuking him. And yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You might just force commune by yourself here. Yeah, so he ends up having to emerald communion. So at this point, we now have gotten um, trinket and communion from the healer. Which means that if he sits a full stun with you and your right hitting him with any bit of burst, 
you basically are going to win the game. If his teammates don't peel you guys, this guy is basically just already dead. You kind of already won the game in one more setup. Um, little things to be nitpicky really quick. I'm just going to rewind a little bit here. There's little details I noticed in some of these games where we're getting um, really low value out of some cooldowns that are really good. So right here, we end up dropping a smoke bomb. I think the way you should probably try to play around smoke bomb um, if you're playing with CDR, you'll get it back faster than two minutes, which means you'll have it twice in the time that someone can trink it once. So you could use Smoke Bomb offensively to kind of try to force a trinket, which is kind of what you're doing here. Um, but I would probably just wait and hold your Smoke Bomb until you have a good opportunity. Because now you're in a window here um, where you force Communion off the healer and you don't have Smoke Bomb, which means that if you send a setup on the healer, Let's say the demon hunter is he's chasing your healer or he's chasing your ret somewhere while your ret's hitting something else. Let's say that the demon hunter is basically not on you and the warlock's standing over here and you have DRs back to stun the healer. You'll have a window where you can kind of close the game where you could just kidney shot smoke bomb the healer. That way you're not going to get fear spammed by the warlock. You're not going to get coiled. The DH isn't going to cage you. He's not going to be able to like stun you unless he comes over to the bomb. Smoke bomb is really good in windows like this um, to kind of protect yourself from getting CC'd if you're killing a healer or if you're going on the DPS, obviously to stop the healer from being able to heal them. But yeah, we're kind of like shoving. Uh, I think we've done this a couple times during all these water views. Smoke bomb is definitely a really, really, really strong tool, but we have to use it in a, a pretty specific way. Um, this is one of the biggest mistakes I used to make as a uh, rogue a lot, sub rogue especially back in Shadowlands, is kind of just throwing out smoke bomb left and right. But if used correctly, this is a extremely strong cooldown. So something uh, I would definitely be more patient with for sure. Uh, I just wanted to talk on that for one second. But yeah, this is great. We got we got the healer um, to trinket and communion, and we got both DPS trinkets. So honestly, from an experienced rogue POV here, the game is basically over. All you need to do is live until the next setup. You have your Cold Blood Secret Tech coming back in 14. You don't have a dance for a while. So unfortunately, if, if we were playing CDR build, honestly, your vanishes could even get your dance back instantly. But yeah, we just need one kind of somewhat clean setup where we send a kidney on the healer with a lot of burst. Honestly, if you got those fast fingers, you could even type to your rep pally, uh, go healer soon or healer or type anything to him so he has an idea of what you want to do. Um, the only cooldown they really have to peel you other than spam seeing you is, uh, I believe the DH has darkness still. I could be wrong. Pretty sure he does not have darkness though. Um, so yeah, I would just maybe get like a pre-rupture up on the healer just to get the most damage in the setup. And we send a kidney on the warlock. So, um, this is going to be a really big mistake, I think, because we're not playing CDR. So we're not going to be able to get kidney back for another 18 seconds, even though the healer's off DR in four seconds. And since we're trying to kill the healer, ideally we want to kill him in a kidney shot just for a longer stun. That being said, your your pally does have Hodge coming back, so you could still go with a healer and a Hodge. Um, but yeah, you're now no longer really able to kidney shot the DH or the Evoker, which are much better targets in my opinion. Um, so a bit of a mistake here, sending it on the Warlock. Um, I understand going Warlock and the idea of controlling his damage, but I just think you're so far ahead here that you should be looking to close the game out. You don't really need to control um, the enemy team that much. You need to just kind of find your win condition and close the game out. And we actually ended up we actually ended up committing uh, cold blood secret tech here too. So this actually ends up probably being a really big mistake, uh, potentially why we lose this game. So the DH stuns us here. We have some damage coming in on us, and the healer is off stun DR now, and he's actually flying right over our heads as well. Uh, our boy throws his Hodge on the DH, which means that uh, it's basically your responsibility now to stun the healer. So once again, I really, really, really want you to look for this healer setup here. We do have our Kyrian back for some more damage. Uh, we step back over to the Warlock. Yeah, and I think I think we did a really good job earlier with the Blind. We forced the Healer's Trinket, and then we did a swap to him and got Communion. We just need to do one more big setup on the Healer, and we can definitely close the game out. So I think maybe you're seeing that now. We duel him. Okay. So this is something that you can do sometimes, kind of setting sending a setup in a Shadowy Duel. I wouldn't really recommend this unless you have all of your damage cooldowns up and somebody's already kind of low HP. But basically all this does is um, it does prevent you from getting peeled from the Demon Hunter and the Destro. Uh, but now your teammates can't help you attack this guy. You know, if he gets in 20% health, or sorry, if he gets in 15% health, your um, monk can come in. He can touch of death and instantly kill a guy. Uh, your red pally can obviously help you do a ton of damage. But without Cold Blood Secret Tech, there just isn't a realistic way you can actually solo the healer at all. Um, so I really, really don't, I'm not a huge fan of the duel here. Um, I didn't, I don't mind the duel defensively to just kind of stall the clock out and like, uh, let the come back on people, but I'm um, doing it to try to do a setup on him. I think is a little, a little bit of a mistake as well. 
So we're sending a bit of damage. And now what we've done is we've actually, we've kind of just put the healer on stun DR now. So the healer feels safe to play the game again. Um, and we kind of missed, we've kind of missed our opportunity to close the game out twice now. Uh, and I think, yeah, and our repel ends up dying. So yeah, I think the biggest, the biggest issue this game is mostly just target choices. Um, like I said, when you're playing versus Mistweaver in the other games, it's great to just spam CC the healer. But when you're when you're playing versus a different comp like this, like a Preservation Evoker, you should actually, in my opinion, try to spam do setups on the Evoker. Just because if you watch throughout the game, uh, skim through again really quick, you'll probably notice there's a lot of time in the game where he's just in melee range. He's very close. You don't even need to use a step. He's kind of just... He's kind of just floating around, pretending that he's Spyro, trying to collect whatever you collect in the game. You know what I'm saying? He's just having a good old time floating around, and you got to kind of ruin his day. That's what, that's what you need to do. You need to get some step kidneys and apply a lot of pressure. Um, I think this was probably the best window in the game um, for your gameplay in this one. Um, the blind, when you have pressure on DH, getting a trinket and swapping him and getting his communion. If you were to keep applying this kind of pressure throughout the whole game, you would probably win this round very, very, very fast. Um, but this was beautiful. Unfortunately, we just made a little bit of mistakes, kind of going the wrong target. We ended up going the Warlock here, which was not good because we used Kidney, and then we also sent our Burst into it, our Cold Blood Secret Tech. So just some mistakes like that, and uh, when it comes to Solo Shuffle, that's what's going to make the difference. Um, it's just the little decisions like this, um, they're going to add up and be the difference of climbing or staying stuck at the same rating. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like the video, and uh, thank you. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed another VOD review. Be sure to follow Palomar on Twitch, where he streams almost every day. And while you're doing that, we want to tell you more about SkillCap.com. We work with the best players in WoW to produce hundreds of website-exclusive guides. And now with a SkillCap membership, you can even get personal support from Rank 1 players in our Ask a Pro forum on Discord. Every season, we help players just like you hit their rating goals from Rival all the way to Rank 1. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started on your next PvP journey, which includes a Rank Up guarantee as long as you use the videos on our website. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. We wish you the best of luck in your rating grind. Thanks for watching. See you soon.